Hey, good day. Bill Vasey here with ECE. Thanks for taking a look at this video about using Plant 3D to get jackets on piping. We're going to present a workflow today that includes adding those jackets to some existing 2-inch pipe. We're going to put some work order numbers on components. We're going to create some name views and ultimately get some detailed drawings. I'm jumping right into the AutoCAD environment and we've already got some 2-inch pipe routed. Here, we're just placing components using Plan 3D and the Spec View Palette. We can have a Spec View Palette open that lists all of our components and then just simply browse up and down the palette to find the components we want to inject. We can also use various techniques like adding components to the end and stretching them with the grips. Here, we're going to go ahead and put some half couplings on. You can see how easy it is to put the half couplings on. And then inserting some more components on top of this branch component. I'm going to place a T. And just find a way to get that over the top of the 2-inch piping. Extend the piping on either side of the main run. Outfit the branch with some piping. Let's go check the ends. Here we can stretch to make adjustments on either end so the end caps don't interfere with the flanges. And then finally for modeling, we'll set our size to three quarter inch and finish off this spool with some half couplings across the fitting just to make sure we can get some fluid going in and out of this spool. That's it for the modeling. Now we're going to go to work and put some more intelligence on these components. Before I do that, I need to go unlock the two inch piping I had the piping on a layer and by unlocking it, I now can make adjustments to the data on all of the components. If I make a selection set on spool one, I'm going to give this a work order number. We've added a work order number to the Plant 3D project. And here I'm going to populate this work order number with 125501. This is going to be my first assembly that I'm going to have under a work order. Going to repeat that for the other spool, and we're going to call that spool 125502. Using work order number to manage the spools and all of the downstream detailing you'll see in just a second. All right, we'll just finish making this data entry for work order 125.02. And now the next step is to go to work and produce the detailed drawings for these two spool pieces. Here's where we're going to transition to a couple EC plugins. The first one we're going to focus on is ViewWorks. ViewWorks gives us the ability to put in a named view. Here, I'm going to go ahead and just use that work order number. We're going to start out with 125501. We can adjust this where it'll increment to 0203. So I'm just going to have to enter the 1255. ViewWorks will take care of the rest. As I go in there and select components, ViewWorks puts a bounding box around the components I select. This is creating a named view for me that I'll later add to a drawing. I'm going to go ahead and add all my name views here. So I've got 125501 done. By making a selection set around the O2 components, I now have two works boxes, and each of them have their own name, 125501, 125502. So the next step is to get a layout drawing done. Here I've already got one established. Just going to transition to that. And we're also going to transition to the Layout tab within ViewWorks. Within the Layout tab in ViewWorks, we can see all of our production models where we did our pipe routing. And if I expand my jacketed piping drawing, I can see that I've got these two views I created, Spool 1 and Spool 2. They will drop onto the piece of paper just by clicking a couple buttons and I can align these viewports and now I've got my layout drawing stubbed together with those two views. So next I'm going to activate BubbleWorks. BubbleWorks is another ECE plugin built for bubbling all the components. And with this tool, I really just have to make a selection on the bubble type I want to use. 
and then click a viewport and Bubbleworks applies all of the bubbles and then allows me to place a bill of material associated with that. I'm going to go ahead and use Bubbleworks to increment my bubbling to number 15 for the next spool. That way I have consecutive numbering on my bubbles for each work order. Well, as we saw, Bubbleworks plops all the bubbles on, but now as a user, we need to go to work and make adjustments to those bubbles. We need to make them look a little prettier. So we're going to fall back on just some of the Bubbleworks tools here for adjusting the bubbles. We can align and distribute them horizontal. We can group them into pairs, modify the orientation to be horizontal or vertical. All of these Bubble manipulation techniques really are very simple and can be done within a matter of seconds. Let me just finish off some of this bubble orientation and we'll move on to the next step. All right, just like that, in a matter of minutes, we have a couple jacketed spools. And the last thing to do is just transition to a plot to see what it looks like. And with your visual style set appropriately, you'll be able to see the inner pipe as well as the outer jacket and all the details associated with the component bills of materials. That looks to be a pretty complete drawing to me. Just need to get some dimensioning. Everybody knows how to dimension, so I'll leave that up to the experts. Well, thanks again for checking out this video. If you have any questions, please contact us at ecedesign.com or send us an email to support at ecedesign.com. We look forward to the technical engagement.